Aloha, this is Sky, the Soulful Progressive with Evan N. Feminist News Network, the feminist news that's right for you. Welcome to Sky at the Rainbow Room at night. Alright, now if you haven't gotten that soulful secret that that soulful news is out there, subscribe and like today and let your friends know that soulful news is on its way. Alright, so... Uh, even though I got a sore throat, I'm still going to give out the news. So, what do I want to talk to you about today? Two women that are doing it up in their countries. And with women taking over in politics across the world, you need to know about these two women. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about the 37-year-old wonder of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Afro-Brazilian Erica Malalujo, who has taken over in the Sao Paulo legislature. Now, they have never had a Afro-Brazilian woman of transgender or otherwise in their legislature for over 180 years. Now, let's take a listen at what this situation is about as read in the Huffington Post and then we'll discuss. All right. Amid this political climate, Activists in Brazil say the president is emboldening the far right to discriminate against minorities and people of color. In late January, Jean Willis, the country's only openly gay congressman and, like Malung Guinho, a PSOL member, announced he had fled the country after he and his family received a steady stream of death threats. These threats against black and LGBTQ people are not just rhetorical. Brazil which already grapples with high rates of violence against women generally, is the deadliest country in the world for trans women. The Trans Murder Monitoring Project reported that there were at least 167 murders of trans people in the country from October 2017 to September 2018. The LGBT watchdog group Ogay da Bahia recorded at least 387 murders in Brazil it says are directly related to homophobia. Afro-Brazilians, who make up a large portion of neglected communities called favelas, are more likely to die in homicides and killings by police. But Malung Guinho told HuffPost that statistics on violence and alarming headlines regarding black or trans deaths shouldn't cause black people or LGBTQ people to be paralyzed with fear. You cannot be closed off, we cannot be afraid to go out on the street, she said when asked if she was afraid. We have to be careful and create strategies of strengthening and preservation, which is what we have been doing for a long time. As long as they do not kill us, we will survive. These developments are giving people hope that change could be on the horizon. Erica Malunguinho's election is so important because of the large amounts of violence that happen towards trans women and black people in Brazil, said Watovani Po a Ph.D. candidate from Brown University studying Afro-Brazilian queer communities in Sao Paulo. Her election and her political ideology shows the Brazilian public that black people and trans people are more than just statistics, that they are people with radical ideas of how to shift society for the better. It's difficult to tell if Malung Guinho like success could be replicated on a national level or even abroad in the U.S., but he pointed out that her victory was in large due to the painstaking work she has put into caring and maintaining Aperol Halusia, a black empowerment center. Aperol Halusia is a space that Malung Guinho has cultivated in the 15 years that she has lived in the city of Sao Paulo. The small building, located downtown, is where the city's black community can watch musical performances, attend open mics and art exhibitions and join in debates and lectures. Malung Guinho, who hails from Pernambuco in northeastern Brazil, is from one of the country's Quilombo communities, settlements originally founded by rebel slaves. She models this space after her upbringing. Okay, now I know you got that. Now that Alvaro Luza, that place where she had 
built community is where she was able to hit that ground running and able to get those votes in that she needed. Now, an open space like that in every community does have one. Um, in Hawaii, we need more of a solid one instead of one that's once a month or when a festival comes up, which is how it is in some places also. But, um, yeah, creating this center is a allowed her to reach a vast community of the Afro-Brazilians and beyond. So that's why she's in there, because she's talking the language everyone wants to hear. Helping communities be brought up, raised up, and go beyond survival. So let's hear it for her. All right, Erica girl, you get it now. Uh-huh. All right, Erica girl, you get it now. All right. Now, let's talk about another woman doing it up. The first transgender running for prime minister in Thailand. That's right. We're talking about Pauline Nagamspring. Now, let's hear about her story. And then discuss, because this woman is really doing it up. All right. Thailand will hold a general election on March 24th, its first since a military coup in 2014. The contest looks set to be a showdown between the military-backed, royalist Prime Minister Prayuth Chanoka and supporters of exiled former Premier Thuxin Shinawatra. And Garmpring, who goes by her preferred name Pauline, is one of three candidates for Prime Minister from the Mahachan Party, and is not considered a front-runner. But Thailand's LGBT and community is hopeful that she, and the nearly 20 other LGBT and candidates for Parliament that the Mahachan Party is backing, will help focus attention on their challenges and their abilities, an activist said. Her candidacy is significant because she is challenging the traditional norms of gender and sexuality, said Anjana Suvarnanda of the Anjari Group, an LGBT and rights organization. While we have had LGBT people in Thai politics before, no one has asserted their LGBT identity in such a public manner, and there has been no public discussion with such a positive approach, she told the Thomson Reuters Foundation. Family Connections Thailand has built a reputation as a place with a relaxed attitude towards gender and sexual diversity since homosexuality was decriminalized in 1956. The largely conservative Buddhist society is set to pass a landmark law that would make it among the first countries in Asia to legally recognize same-sex couples as civil partners. Women are not taken seriously in Thailand, there have been some women politicians, but it's very difficult to enter politics without family connections, and Garmpring said. Thailand has had one female prime minister, Ying Lakshinawatra, sister of Thuxin, and of the nearly 70 candidates for prime minister this time, seven are women. Women are impeded by discriminatory laws, harassment, and violence, fewer contacts and resources, as well as cultural and social norms, said Alison Davidian at UN Women in Bangkok. These factors all continue to create an environment that is often hostile to women's engagement in politics, she said, while the Mahachan party is campaigning on an agenda of human rights and equality across gender, social, economic and political lines. Its manifesto includes decriminalizing sex work and greater LGBT and rights, including changing one's gender on official documents, which Thailand does not permit now. As a transgender woman, and Garmpring said she has a unique perspective on challenges faced by women and LGBT and people. Because of my public profile, people who are in the closet look at me as an inspiration, and sometimes send me messages, She's one prime minister that was female before, but never that was with the LGB community. And with the violence that's against women in both Brazil and especially in Thailand, with all the sex trafficking, it's good to see that we got somebody that's standing up for those type of rights that are standing up for women in Thailand, that it's helping them 
to bring this agenda forward, to bring this agenda out, to get more equal rights for women in Thailand. Pauline, you got it going on, girl. So you keep making that reality happen to get the word out. Now, we know she's not going to win. She isn't set to win. The Machan party is a good party, though, because it's a party that is recognizing and working for the rights of the people that are less considered, that are demarginalized and considered less of a citizen than the others. So, that's 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 good to see both of these women now um, when Erica got voted in in Brazil that was last December and the vote is coming up March 24th in Thailand for Pauline so let's get the word out if you know anybody from Thailand or or you know anybody else share this video I'm gonna have receipts and links below and let them know that these women are out there now this is women's month so we're gonna start off by talking about these women but I got other Afro Brazilian women that I want to talk about other women around the world that needs to be mentioned and heard and of course women in America that aren't AOC or Jellipal, but other real women that are taking care of real problems and making it happen in America too. So if you enjoy this vlog and you want to see more or you have ideas, leave comments below and let them know. Or contact me at FeministNewsIn at gmail.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Facebook page. And remember, I'm on Patreon and PayPal me, Feminist News Network, to help that one man team. Alright, so remember, I'm also the Soulful Progressive on Twitter. Yeah. So now we got our one year in, friend. I would like to tell all my diehard subscribers, thank you, my Hello, new hello up to you. And now I want you to recognize yourself because guess what? My subscribers are called the News Crew. Uh huh. So thank you, News Crew. That's going to you. Uh huh. So remember, in this era of hey, you got to participate and know about what's going around the world with women that might cost you your faith. I know that's right. Alright, so thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Peace.